Welcome back to Introduction to Computational Chemistry at Valparaiso University. In this session, I would like to show how to impose geometrical constraints when performing a molecular geometry optimization. In other words, rather than asking the Gaussian 09 program to find the geometry for a molecule that gives you the lowest possible energy, we're going to impose a constraint on a particular portion of that geometry and do an optimization that holds one geometrical parameter fixed. And so this is useful when we start to look at the behavior, the dynamical behavior of some molecules. And I'll explain in just a minute. So what we need to do is in Gauss view go ahead and if you don't already have one open, open up the view window and build a new molecule. And so the one that I propose to look at is called hydrazine. A hydrazine, in order to build this, we choose nitrogen from the uh, element window, and then we're going to put what actually is NH3, uh, and then replace one of the hydrogens with another NH3 group. And so you can see here, now we've got a nitrogen-nitrogen bond with then four hydrogens, uh, two coordinating each nitrogen. And one of the interesting features of this molecule is uh, each nitrogen has two uh, electrons that are in a lone pair configuration. And so there's a question in uh, this molecule, what possible geometry, what possible conformation would actually be the most stable uh, form? So, for example, we can look at the dihedral angle, uh, keeping the nitrogen-nitrogen bond distance fixed. We could look at the dihedral angle that's defined by highlighting a hydrogen, the two nitrogens, and then a hydrogen on the opposing nitrogen atom, and rotating that. So right here, we see that that uh, rotation angle, that dihedral angle, is around 60 degrees, but if we grab the slider bar, we can see that we can rotate that angle in order to bring the NH2 groups into various kinds of alignment. And so we can go all the way from something, if we look at it this way, we can see something that is uh, close to being eclipsed right about here, you'd have something that's roughly eclipsed like that, uh, but then we can go further and we can bring it into a more staggered configuration like that, uh, more similar to what we have with something like ethane. So the question is, uh, what relative orientation do those lone pair electrons on the two nitrogens want to have? Would they prefer to be close together? Would they prefer to be further apart? And so there's, uh, in addition to simply optimizing the geometry of that molecule and looking for the lowest possible energy, uh, another way that we can approach this task is by doing what's called a partial optimization calculation. So what that means is that we'll look at this structure, we will set that dihedral angle at a variety of initial values and then for each of those different initial values, we'll do an optimized calculation, a geometry optimization, on all of the other atom positions. So, for example, what if we started like this, all right, and then let's start with the uh, fully eclipsed configuration, and so that would need to be would need to look like, well, let's see, that's not going to do it. Ah, okay, here's what I'll do. Let me redefine that in order to make it easier. Let me redefine the angle like this using the two hydrogens that are actually relatively close together. So here you can see that that angle is 60 degrees. Let's just make it ah uh, let's see what's a what's a better way to do this 
in order so that we can start with the fully eclipsed. Okay, here. Here's another way to do it. Like that. All right. So that angle is 180 degrees. What if I go all the way back to have that to be zero? All right, good. So with that value of zero, we can see the eclipsed configuration is all set up. So what we'll do is, with that value set at zero, uh, we will do an optimization, but we have to tell the program to hold that angle to be zero and then adjust the positions of all the other atoms to get the most stable possible configuration. In order to do this, what we do in Gauss view is we create something that's called a redundant coordinate, a redundant internal coordinate, and then we tell the program to freeze it. Now, internal coordinates are the coordinates that Gaussian uses when it does molecular optimizations. It doesn't just consider the Cartesian coordinates, the XYZ coordinates of the atoms. It considers their positions and their angles relative to one another. And so Gaussian uses bond lengths and bond angles in order to do the geometry optimizations. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add in the coordinate that we just set, the dihedral angle, and, and the type, type of coordinate, we choose dihedral because that's what we're constraining. And then we just click on those atoms in succession. And you'll see that according to the numbering system that was set up when I created the molecule, I've actually selected atoms 6, 4, 1, and 3. Uh, they're numbered on the screen 1, 2, 3, and 4 because that's the uh, order in which I clicked them. But in terms of the order in which those atoms were created, originally it's atoms 6, 4, 1, and 3. All right. You can see there's a grayed out box here that says the current value is zero, and we're just going to leave it like that. But now what's important is, in this dialog box, we want to freeze the coordinate. So freezing it means it's going to do the optimization, but it's going to keep this one frozen. So we click OK there, and now we're going to run a calculation. So we go to Gaussian Calculation Setup. Now to do this calculation, we're actually going to use a job type of optimization, but the method that we're going to use is the default method in Gauss view, which is a quantum mechanical method uh, that makes use of what's called the Hartree-Fock method. And then the basis set that's used is a particular set of functions that are located on each of the atoms that represent atomic orbitals on each of those atoms. So a uh, Gaussian will use that in solving the problem. We could add a title if we wanted to, I'll go ahead and do that here. We'll call this uh, N2H4, right? That's the formula for hydrazine. And we're going to say, uh, I'll, I'll put the method HF slash 321G. That's the method that's being used. And then I'll put the dihedral equals zero. We'll just leave it like that. I don't have to put a title in, but I'll go ahead and do that. OK, the general, we don't really have to change anything here. So we're going to submit this. But, of course, we have to save it first. So what I'm going to do is go into my Chem 221 folder and give this file name a name that indicates what that dihedral angle is. I'm going to call it N2H4 underscore zero. And because the zero represents that dihedral angle. So if I click Save, all right, now it's going to ask me if I want to submit the, ch the uh, calculation to Gaussian, and I do, so I click OK. And very quickly, we should see a message back from uh, Gaussian saying that it's finished doing this particular calculation. And then we want to look at it very carefully to make sure that this dihedral angle that we set to be zero, that we told the program freeze this while you're doing the optimization, uh, make sure that it actually followed those instructions and kept it that way. So this calculation Ah, great! Okay, there it is. So we want to read open the log file, and remember to click this box that will show us not just the final geometry, but the intermediate geometries along the way. Gaussian does this calculation in a number of steps. So we click OK. All right, so here is uh, structure one of five. So it took five steps in order to reach this, and you can see there's the initial structure that has that dihedral angle of zero. And let me just click the, ooh, look at that, the 
nitrogen nitrogen distance increased and the hydrogen atoms move but they move in such a way which is what we were trying to check out they move in such a way that that dihedral angle stays zero and I can I can test that out you should always verify this that dihedral angle was defined starting with atom six so let me just go to the inquire uh, the question mark is selected so we go six to four to, to one to three like this and then down in the lower corner we see the dihedral angle is zero so what's nice about this is uh, even though the positions of the atoms changed this relative angle between the two hydrogen atoms stayed at zero just like we wanted it to and so that's always a good when you're doing a, a constrained or a partial optimization it's always a good idea to make sure that that's the case all right now uh, one of the things that I'll want to do with this is I'll want to look at the energy so the results summary tells me what the energy is for this particular molecule minus 110.5309-2006 in units of Hartree's and this is something if I was going to uh, uh, compare these energies as I change the rotation angle then I would uh, I would put take that number and put it into a spreadsheet uh, so let, let me just show you how to take the next step let's say that I want to do this kind of a calculation by varying that dihedral angle in increments of 30 degrees so I'll take it all the way from 0 degrees all the way around to 180 and we'll do it in 30 degree steps so let me go ahead and use this final geometry but I just want to go to the modify dihedral angle tour a tool and I'm going to change the dihedral angle from 0 to 30 alright the easy way to do this I select those four atoms and then rather than use the slider bar I'm just gonna go into the box and click 30 alright so that's great that's okay now you can see clearly on the screen that there's been a rotation and now this this angle hydrogen nitrogen nitrogen hydrogen that dihedral angle is now 30 degrees I'm ready to do the calculation Gaussian calculation set up okay now just to check uh, before I do that let me cancel for a second I'll go back to edit edit the redundant coordinates and make sure that this is still set up properly and it is because I've got the the three one four six angle there uh, and we have it currently at 30 degrees we're and, and the coordinate is frozen so that's okay click OK now we're ready to do the calculation calculate set up everything has stayed the same we're gonna submit this it asks us to save the file and we're, we'll save it and I'm gonna change the file name because I don't want to overwrite the file that I already had so I'm gonna change the zero to a 30 because 30 represents the dihedral angle so I save it submit the calculation to Gaussian and I'm actually saving some computational time by doing it this way because I started from the optimized structure for the zero degree dihedral angle and so rather than go back to the initial geometry uh, now uh, I've taken advantage of some of the optimization that was done uh, in the first calculation and so we're just now twisting the molecule by changing this dihedral angle a little bit from 0 to 30 degrees and then I'll follow the same kind of procedure to go to 60 degrees and 90 and 120 150 and 180 which will take me through a uh, half of a complete rotation around the nitrogen nitrogen axis so let's see how long this takes uh, for Gaussian to do this calculation it shouldn't take very long uh, we're waiting here in real time sure enough it's finished we want to read the intermediate geometries and that opens up a new window okay you can see the nitrogen nitrogen distance is a little bit larger in uh, this structure and that's uh, that's not it doesn't indicate that there's anything wrong it's just that uh, it's larger than the program uh, uh, uses to connect those two atoms oh and actually if I go to if I go to uh, step 22 which is the last step here uh, we can see that the nitrogen atoms come closer together and let's just check to see if that dihedral angle stayed at 30 degrees I set it at 30 initially so we click those atoms and 
look into the, ah sure enough dihedral angle of 30 degrees that's great so it, uh, all throughout the calculation it stayed at 30 degrees so there's the very last step step 22 the calculations finished results summary tells me what the angle is here for uh, this configuration and so that's the way to do a constrained optimization and by comparing those energies looking at the energy of the molecule as a function of that dihedral angle we can get information about what the most stable configuration of that molecule is so hope that's helpful in doing a little bit more complicated kind of calculation than just doing a complete geometry optimization have fun